All right, good afternoon. This is Mr. Amos Kesta again. We are back with the continuation of the video. So last time I told you the error we observed, the bricklayer did it here, but this is a foot deep. You have to dip your leg here and here. This water is uh, contained with chemicals, so anything under my foot has to go in here before I step into the building. So this is what we call the foot deep. So anybody coming into the poultry structure must have to dip his leg inside here. We have water and isal, which is a chemical that kills ants and other bacteria in here. So that's why we have the water and the chemical inside. So we're going to take you inside now. We brought the beds. I think they're about three days old now since we brought them. Unfortunately, uh, it was late when they arrived, so we couldn't make the video, but we'll show you what they look like just three days after arrival. So, moving. Alright, so these are the feeds where we store them, and these are some of the drinkers, the feeders for the adult birds. This is the feeder for the adults. And we have uh, the drinkers already inside with the chick feeders. So uh, this is my farm hand, Mr. Ibrahim. Uh, he's actually a very nice guy and he's doing a good job. Alright, so we're going to take you inside now. You can see this is the brooder house. We actually had to blind it and prepare it in a way that uh, it will conserve a lot of heat for the day with chicks. So we just had to take a little portion out of the house. But Beds begin to grow, we are going to spread them around the entire structure. So we're just going to take it inside now. This is our doorway for now. So yeah. So you can see we are inside and these are birds. We have two thousand day old broilers here. So this is the drinker and this is the chick feeder. So it makes it easier for them to assess the food. And these are electric boogers. So the bulbs are below the ground, very low to the ground. So when they are very cold, they come close to it. But we try to heat it up to ensure that they are not cold. The temperature should be what it is. So you can see our cold pots here. So these are cold pots. But now the temperature inside is okay, is ideal. That's why we've not heated them up. So we have the cold pot in different spots with the electric builders. That makes it okay for the birds. So you can see they are evenly distributed in the structure. Uh, if they were clustering together in one session, that's to say they are too cold. And if they were just far away at the walls and leaving the center of the heat, then you see they are too hot. The environment is too hot. But when you see them evenly distributed in the structure like this, they are everywhere in the brooder house. That tells you the temperature is okay. By theory, the brooding temperature is 33.33 33 degrees centigrade. Uh, but that is just theoretical. You can have that and the beds may still be too cold or too hot. So the best way for you to understand if the beds are okay with the brooding conditions is when you see them evenly distributed around the brooding house. So just like the way they have, they are not cold, they are not too hot. So uh, the temperature and the conditions are ideal because we're actually in the dry season. The sun is up, so you don't need to put on the bulbs and the cool, uh, in the cold pots. So you just need to regulate the temperature. But as it goes lower, probably late in the evening, when the temperature starts to drop, we first of all put the bulbs and wash the conditions. And after then, if it's getting colder, we now put our cold inside the cold pot. So these are the cold pots. So you can see the hatch is inside what was burnt last night so this morning the weather conditions are ideal so uh these birds are just three days old like i said we are into every form of livestock production and management we are going to bring you more videos on this in fact you will, you will grow with the birds i will show you the different stages of groups of the birds so until then it's bye from us for now 
My name once again is Mr. Amos Kesta Ebiwe. I'm the CEO of Kesta Amos Consultancy Services Limited. To reach us, the number to call is plus two three four six sorry plus two three four eight zero six eight five two five zero three two. That's the number to call if you want to go into poultry production. Of course, our first video we talked about the wire match. Most I'm seeing that the wire we use is uh, quite different from what most of the poultry farmers use. This is for durability and it also helps to prevent predators like snakes. You see this noise, this crap, crap, crap noise they make. It attracts snakes even from very long distance. So with this, snakes cannot easily assess it. And any snail that will be able to swallow a bird will not be able to pass through this. So that is why we use this. It's quite expensive, yes, but uh, what is worth doing is worth doing well. So if you want to set up a poultry farm, this is one of the best materials you need to use. So we've shared too much already, so we'll see you some other time. Bye-bye.